Market.com, compare the Market.com. He bros. I like things to be perfect. I demand A1 vision. And, and we, we got, got it. it. Not with glasses or contact lenses. With ultra lays. Simple, instant. Rising damp at 25 past seven. That's all after a trip to the Yorkshire countryside for heartbeats. Crown Bingo, sponsors of ITV3 Daytime. Job of it. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I thought you'd think so. It'll be a lovely outside home for him when he wants to be in the garden. <laughs> yeah, you, you, don't, you don't want Andy to do it. Now, how much do we agree again? Oh, well, if you remember, normally I charge 30 quid, but for you, 25. 15, good. Now then, I've got another little problem. I'm not chucking your money about. What, what sort of a problem is it, Mrs. Benton? I did enjoy that, Sarge. Enjoyed it. I wouldn't go that far off. Still, I suppose it's important that we councillors show our faces at these events. Oh. Yeah. Sarge. Ah, Vicar, we were just saying how much we've enjoyed the concert. Good. I'm very glad. Mary says we've raised eighty pounds towards the roof so far. Eighty-two pounds seven and sixpence, to be exact, Reverend Gibbs. Oh, that's excellent news, Vicar. Sarge, aren't we better get going? Uh, yes. Look. Do you think you could shut up shop, Mary? Of course. Ruth isn't well. That's why she had to leave early. She has a migraine, you see. You get off, Reverend Gibbs. Alf and I can shut up shop, can't we? Oh, of course. Oh. Well done, Alf. The Ashbitley dog show is the day after tomorrow, and Harvey would have been a certain winner, but I have to go and see my brother, who's been taken ill. I'm sorry to hear that. So you, you'll have to miss it then, will you? Yes, and the £30 prize, too. 30 quid. A bit unfortunate. Yes, it's worse than that. Harvey won his last two shows with flying colours. A third victory and he'd become a champion. In there, please. So, so, so if you won it, well, you, you, you'd be able to make a few bob out of him as a stud, would you? As a what? A stud, David. As far as you're concerned, it's something they put in a collar. Listen, can't, can't, you, can't you get someone to enter in for you? Yes, but who? It'd have to be somebody entirely responsible with a genuine empathy with dogs and Harvey in particular. It's very good of you, Al. Oh, that's all right. Mrs Ventress told me you'd expect it. I'm sorry she couldn't get to the concert herself. Oh, so she. She's devoted to this church, you know. Only uh, she doesn't get many opportunities to visit her sister these days. Quite. Now, if you'll just put those in the vestry, then we'll go. 
yourself. What's that? The candlesticks. They're gone. a glass of water, Mrs. Gibbs. But you've no business coming in the house. Reverend Gibbs said it was all right. Well, I certainly haven't. I'm sorry. Go on. Just get out. I told them they could come in. I'm not sure you should have, Thomas. Why not? You know why not. Are you sure you can trust them? Just because they're a bit different doesn't make them criminals or anything. No, but you've heard the rumours as well as I have. I refuse to be influenced by gossip and prejudice. We, above all, have a duty to treat them decently. Exactly. Well, I think I've done my charitable duty for today. Just a pity you couldn't wait till the end of the concert. Yes, Mum, it was embarrassing for Dad. I told you I had a really bad headache. I'm sorry. Not to worry. There'll be other times. Oh, the joys of being a clergyman's wife. <laughs> Reverend Gibbs? That's right. PC Mike Bradley, Aidensfield Police. His coat must be shampooed and brushed the night before and then again on the morning of the show. And his ears, of course, must be absolutely spotless, but you can use cotton buds for that. And his teeth, well, his teeth must be absolutely gleaming. Here. Are you sure you want to take this responsibility on? Oh, yes, Mrs. Benton. People always think we're responsible. Oh, well, good. As you know, I'm a woman of some means, so when Harvey achieves championship status, he'll be worth his weight in gold. Oh. So when he wins, I'll keep the trophy and you can have the prize money. Mm. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> music to me is that. <laughs> many thank yous in advance. <laughs> have you any idea when the candlesticks could have been taken? I think they were there last night, but I wouldn't swear to it. It's really despicable behaviour. Well, I presume they were valuable. Yes, but it's not the monetary value. It's the fact they've been in that church for years. Someone just walks in and takes them. So you don't actually ever lock the church? Of course not. A church should be there as a place of refuge and prayer for everyone at any time. For anyone to abuse that trust is quite appalling. Yes, yes it is. Well, we'll get on with our inquiries and uh, get back to you as soon as possible. You're making a good job of that. Hey, look at that. It's a nice bit of steak. Look, where'd you get that? Oh, from the butchers. That is the best sirloin, that is. Cost five bob. Five bob? Be a bit extravagant, did not it? You better stick it under the grill, I'm starving. Well, no, it's, it's not for us, it's, it's for Harvey. Uh, Harvey, you? <laughs> Harvey the dog. Mrs. Benton's strict instructions. You're the best steak only for him. Oops. And pigs, mate. He can share Alfred's stripe. <laughs> Give Harvey tripe. <laughs> Why not? Alfred's done very well on it, and let's face it, <laughs> Harvey's not going to tell his mummy, is he? Well, she trusted us. And rightly so. Give it a battering and stick it under the grill. If I enjoy it, I'll let you take Harvey for walkies. Go on, go on, I'll finish him. Hi. Ah. Hiya. What are you doing here? Bit of a loose end. Thought I'd pop by. Oh, good. Because Oscar's out and I'm in need of some male assistance. Well, look no further. What's your problem? Need help behind the bar? Oh, no. Something much more challenging than that. Something that'll take expert skill. I'm your man. Well, follow me then. There.
fine, then. Can I talk to you? Of course. You don't mind me coming here? Of course not. Are you sure? Yeah, we're pretty well finished anyhow. Look, I'm really sorry about how Mum was with you. It's not your fault. We're used to it. I just don't know how long I can stand it. Still, it won't be for much longer, will it? No. Simon, what's wrong? Nothing. Tell me, there is, there is something. I suppose I'm worried about Dad. About how he'd manage without me. So what are you saying? You don't want us to go away together? No, I'm not saying that. Isn't that simple? I'm worried about Dad and leaving him. If you don't want to leave him, just say. I do. It's just, there's a lot to sort out. You know I want to be with you. Yeah. I love you, Karen. If I were a carpenter and you were a lady. Okay, you can Crown go. Bingo. Sponsors of ITV3 Daytime. Oh, Crown, where it's all about the bingo. Join Billy on his epic journey as he follows in the footsteps of the great explorers. I shall now step into... Sponsors of ITV3 Daytime. Crown, where it's all about the bingo. How's it going? Fine. Absolutely fine. It's proving to be more uh, complicated. And I thought, I'm going to have to dismantle the U-Bend. And you know how to do it? Oh, yeah, no problem at all. I just need some, uh, some special tools. And I'll have to come back tomorrow. That's really good of you, Phil. Pleasure's all mine. What's that smell? Me, I think. Oh, it's horrible. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I was wondering if you could help me. If I can. Silver candlesticks, matching uh, matching this description. Have you had anyone come in and pawn them today? No. Well, if they do, uh, keep in mind that they were stolen from Eltring Church sometime yesterday. Stolen from a church? Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I thought I'd pop into York and do some shopping. Oh. Something wrong? No, it's the bring and buy over at St Barnabas. I told them you'd go over and help set it up this afternoon. Oh, well. If I'm back in time, I'll nip over. But they're expecting you. Thomas, I said I'd try. But I need your support. We are supposed to be a partnership. Mm. You know, I've got my work cut out as it is. Writing sermons, running two churches, mm. ministering to the needs of countless parishioners. I know you have, Thomas. But nobody forced you to be a vicar, did they? And nobody forced you to marry me, did they? But I married you because I loved you. It's just I need to get away sometimes. You do understand, don't you? I know it's not easy. And you know I want you to be happy. So you really don't mind if I go to York? Can't you get someone else to fix them for her? No. Well, I mean, yes, you could. That's uh, what uh, you want to do. Yeah. Phil, you don't know the first thing about plumbing. Oh, come on, you can't be joking. <laughs> Mike, I'm following. Phil, come here. How's your inquiries going? Uh, nothing so far, uh, Sarge. I've checked with some of the local dealers, but uh, none of them have been offered any candlesticks. Well, that's not to say it won't happen. Oh, quite, Sarge. And it may be only a pair of candlesticks, but I want this culprit apprehended. Otherwise, the whole criminal fraternity would be under the impression that any church in the area is fair game for this kind of thing. Sarge. Sarge. Ventress? Sarge. What are you doing? Flowers in a police station? What on earth's going on? They're for Eltring Church. Mrs. Ventress has wrote it to do them this evening, but as she's away, obviously she can't. I see. So you're going to arrange them, are you? I was going to stick them in a couple of vases. Oh, don't underestimate yourself, Alf. Yeah, I'm sure you'll do a lovely job. 
I mean, we all know you've got a flair for things like that. All right, all right. But somebody's got to do it. Oh, quite. The show must go on. I applaud your sense of duty and public spirit, Ventress. You'll be all right on your own for a minute, Gina. Yeah, sure. I think I'd best take a look at that kitchen sink. Oh, it's OK. Phil's dealing with it. The... What, Phil and me? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. I didn't realise he was a plumbing expert. Well, you don't often see those two in here. It's understandable, really. They're hardly the most popular people, are they? Well, you can't blame the village for that, Jackie. It's still unfair, Oscar. Well, I think the owners of Enderby Hall might have something to say about that. Simon didn't break into Enderby Hall. <laughs> that's what he says. They just happened to live nearby, that's all. There was no real evidence against him. And you, being a solicitor, he would know about that. Simon was innocent, Oscar. He was found innocent. Not the same thing. Hi. Hi. So the sanitary engineers arrived then? I'm raring to go. Good boy. Go by yourself. Hey, Good boy. Bobby. Twerp the big one. Oh, sure. Oh, that's it. Oh, no, it's seized up. Well, you can fix it, though, can you? I certainly hope so, Bellamy. Because you obviously don't have a clue, do you? Of course I have. I'm uh, not sure I might what to do. A likely story. Wouldn't you say so, Bradley? <laughs> Mary. Mr. Greenbrass! Mr. Greenbrass! Mr. Greenbrass! Hey, where's Harvey? Well, uh... Well, uh, what? He's got to be washed and groomed and well, everything. It's his big day tomorrow. Where is he? Well, the, the thing is, he was... The thing is, where is he? Well, uh, I was... And he Will was... you spit it out? Where is he? I've lost him. You've done what? Thank you, Doctor. Alf, how are you feeling? I'm a bit groggy. I bet you didn't realise flower arranging was such a dangerous business. Did you get a chance to see your taxi? No, I, I just heard this noise in the vestry. I walked in and wallop. I wish I'd had a chance to apprehend them. Well, don't worry about it, Alf. You just concentrate on getting better. Does Mrs. Ventress know? Uh, no. She's visiting her sister in Formby. Well, we'll give her a call if you like. No, you don't have to do that. I've told them that I, I don't want them to worry her until they've got my condition stabilised. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Alf. Well, I always try to be where Mrs. Ventress is concerned. How's Alf? Minor concussion, but the doctor says he should be out in a few days. So, uh, what's been taken? I've made a list. Brassware, paintings, chairs. They haven't left much out, have they? They've got into the safe as well.
So, what's been taken? Our silverware. Strange. It uh, doesn't look like it's been forced. No. They must have used a key. I'm not staying. I just wanted to check the plumbing's okay now. Yeah, it's working fine. I really appreciate it. Any sign? You just let me know if there's anything else you need fixing. Well, I will. What's wrong? Uh, uh, I've had a bath. I've had two baths, in <laughs> fact. I'm only joking. <laughs> but yeah, just to be sure. My way of saying thank you. We think PC Ventress must have disturbed the thief or thieves as they were raiding the safe. They then attacked him, emptied the safe and scarped I can't believe it. So soon after the other theft. Dreadful. Mm. You keep the key to the safe. That's right. Locked in my bureau in the sitting room. Would you mind checking it's still there? Of course not. It's been forced. And the key's gone. Has anyone had access to the house recently? Simon? Simon? Simon Cutler, handyman. Lives over at Cooper's Wood. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I know. He and his father have been doing some work for us. Found him in the kitchen yesterday. Only because we said they could come in and make a drink. All the same, it gave him the opportunity to take the key. Perhaps, but I don't think it would have been him. <sighs> How can you be so sure? Look, I know what other people around here think of them, but unlike most of them, I've taken the trouble to get to know them. And I trust them. So, you, you're sure this is the spot? Oh, yeah, yeah. You ran it through that gate and ran off that way. Yeah, right, right. Give, give me his watch, sir. Here, here, here. Come on, Alfie. Give us a good stuff of that, right? Show us where Alfie is. Have a good night. Find Alfie. Find Alfie. <laughs> Not us, Alfie. No, no. He's, no, he's, no. he's about as gormless as you. He hasn't got a clue. Find Alfie. What have you let him off the lead for? No, we must them as well. So, a break in at Enderby Hall. Simon had been working there a few weeks before. The owners were convinced he'd done it. But he didn't. No, not according to Jackie. She should know. She defended him. Look, the old man was a bit strange, but uh, Simon seemed OK. <laughs> Mr. Cutler, is uh, Simon around? We'd uh, we'd like a word with him, please. Simon, what? Well, look, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. What questions? Have you been inside the vicarage in the last few days? What if I have? There was an incident at Eltring Church last night. The safe was broken into. Somebody must have stolen the key from the vicarage. And you think it was me? <clears throat> no. No, I didn't say that. But you have been working at the vicarage. Oh, so it has to be me. Well, I'm sick of it. Sick of being blamed when something like this happens. No one can ever think of anyone else to lay it on but me. Simon, all we're trying to do is find out the truth. And if you're innocent, we can eliminate you from our inquiries. Okay? The vicar said I could go into the house. Yeah, I'm aware of that, sir. I thought you trusted us. Is this yours, Simon? It's under your bed. It's mine. Dad? It's mine. What of it? I think we should continue this down at the station. Tina? It's working a treat now. 
Good. Do you mind telling me what's going on? What do you mean? Between you and Bellamy. What are you talking about? Nothing's going on. Well, there seems to be no limits to his desire to please you. Oh, he's just being nice, that's all. And he likes helping out around the place. Look, he's fixed the sink. And now he's offered to look at the upstairs toilet system. Oh, has he? <sighs> look, we're not trying to make you feel redundant, Oscar. <laughs> I don't feel redundant in the least. You see, it wasn't Bellamy that fixed that sink in the first place. You what? <laughs> he got Mike Bradley to do it. Bellamy wouldn't know a you bend from a bullcock. <laughs> I worked for it. What, over a hundred pounds? Yes. Simply by doing odd jobs for your father? We work hard. When you can find work, which can't be that often. It isn't. Sergeant, my client has explained to you how he came by the money. The fact that he works hard and lives frugally and has managed to save some money hardly constitutes evidence against him. We're just trying to get at the truth, Mrs. Bradley. Mm, my client's already told you the truth, Sergeant. You're wasting your time. They've already decided I did it. That's not true. Isn't it? Without evidence, there's no way they can charge you with this, Simon. They don't believe you. You and he are married, aren't you? That doesn't make any difference. I'm here to protect your interests. Well, you're not getting very far. It would help if you told us where you were at the time of the theft, Simon. Your father's already confirmed you weren't at the cottage. I've told you I just went for a walk. Where, Simon? I don't remember. Why are you being so evasive? I'm not being evasive. But you lot have got it in for me, whatever I say. Joe, what is it? Reverend, come in. Take a seat. Tell us what's happened. It's Simon. What about Simon? The police. They took him. They think he stole from church. Well, it's hardly surprising, is it? Mum, what's happened to Simon? The thing... They think... They think he broke into this house and took the key. They found money. Help him, please. They won't listen to us. But they'll believe you. Well, I'm not really sure if I can intervene. Why not? Well, if the police have the suspicions, they have to follow them up. What, so you just let them go ahead and blame him whether he did it or not? That won't happen. I'm sorry to say this, Joe, but Simon has been working here. He did have the opportunity. Perhaps we'll have to face the possibility that he may be responsible. No. How much longer is this going to go on, Sergeant? For as long as it takes, Mrs. Bradley. Well, so far, you haven't produced a shred of evidence. We've established that Simon has a large amount of cash, that they had the opportunity to break into the vicarage, and that he's unable or unwilling to give us a convincing account of where he was at the time of the robbery at Eltering Church. I'm aware of that, Sergeant. Come in. Sorry to interrupt, Sarge. He Can was with you? me when the church was broken into. Weren't you, Simon? We're in love. We have to keep it a secret because of my parents. If they find out, they'll stop us from seeing each other. Is this why you wouldn't say where you were? Yes. The money's for us. We've been saving so we can get away from here and make a life together. <laughs> Oh, I think Alfred must definitely be on the scent, Mr. Greengrass. What good is that to us when we don't know where he is now? You've got some explaining to do to Mrs. Benton, you have. Hold on, Mr. Greengrass. Mr. Greengrass! Look! <laughs> Someone took that key from the Reverend Gibbs's desk. Since there was no sign of a break-in at the house, what are the alternatives? Well, it seems hardly feasible that Ruth Gibbs or Karen could have knocked out Alf Ventress. Which only leaves the Reverend Gibbs, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What do we know about him? Only that he hasn't been vicar there for very long. Right. See what you can find out about him. <laughs> 
well done, Alfred. Good boy. I knew he'd find him. He might have found him, but we've still got to get him from over there to over here, haven't we? Yeah, well, I, I thought I might, uh, you know, tempt him across with one of them. Don't talk, Dad. I don't want him in that water. He'll get filthy. Well, what are we going to do? He'll have to wade over and get him. <laughs> then I'll get wet. You got us into this. Get us out of it. Go on. I'll take the bucket. Go on. It's freezing! Think of the hot water you'll be in if you don't go and get him. Come on! I'll be. Yeah, I'll be. Sorry, Mr. Greengrass. You will be. I was, uh, I was wondering about this chair. Ah, yes. A lovely piece. Bought it yesterday. Can you tell me where it came from? A chap over in Ashfordley, by the name of Oakes. Why are you asking? Look, this has gone far enough. Really? You think so? I want nothing more to do with you. I think you're a bit hasty saying that, given your esteemed position in this community. Please, just leave us alone now. Look. You got yourself into this situation. You've only got yourself to blame if you think it's got out of hand. Oh, no. Where are you going? Are you positive it was the Reverend Gibbs, Bellamy? Yes, Sarge. And you think he saw you? I'm pretty sure. Well, it looks like Oakes and Reverend Gibbs have colluded in the theft in some way. Right. I suggest you go up and see the Reverend Gibbs immediately. Thank you, Sarge. Simon Cutler, of all people. I don't want to talk about it. Well, I do! How long has this been going on? It's none of your business. Of course it is! You are scarcely 16 years old. You've got exams coming up. And you get yourself involved with a odd job man and thief. It's not a thief. Yes, he is. Why can't you accept that he stole that stuff from the church? He didn't. He was with me. Oh. I just don't understand why you were so unwilling to stand up for him. I thought you liked him and Joe. I did. I do, but... What's changed? Why didn't you do anything? Oh, don't bother trying to explain. You're just like everyone else! Mr Greengrass, I've, I've had an idea. Why, why don't we enter Alfred in the dog competition? It would surprise me slightly if they had a class for lurchers. Oh, no, no. I mean, I mean, there's a poodle. I reckon with a bit of work, I could make Alfred look like Harvey. What are you going to do for an encore? The loaves and the fishes? Hey, where are you going? Over to Mrs Benton's. See if Harvey's gone back there. In the meantime, why don't you get busy with your magic wand and your curling tongs? Alfred! <laughs> Alfred! Rest yourself, I'll go. Mrs Gibbs, can we have another word with your husband, please? Come in. Thomas, the uh, police are here to see you. Oh. Excuse me. How can I help you? Harvey! 
It was obviously someone else. Someone who looks like me. I saw you coming out of that shop very clearly, Reverend Gibbs. All right. Yes, it was me. It was stupid. And yes, I feel very ashamed. But we've been very hard up since we came here. I felt I had to do something. I took the candlesticks to Oaks, but he found out who I was and demanded I help him. He threatened me and said he'd tell the police. In the end, I said yes. So you gave him the keys to the safe? Yes. And it was Oakes who attacked PC Ventress? Yes. I never thought anything like that would happen. I thought he'd leave us alone. But then he asked me to get the key to St Barnabas safe. I said no. What? It's gone. Three, daytime. Crown, where it's all about the bingo. This is Harvey. I'm sorry. This is Benton's dog. I'm entering him for the pedigree poodle competition. In the what? Poodle competition? You have as much chance of winning the poodle class with, with that as I have of becoming the next pope. You, uh, you might try and him for that competition if you like. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, thank you. Don't let the sun catch you crying. Simon, what are you doing out here? Thinking. Look, it's not going to work, Karen. It's not that I don't love you. It's just... I'm never going to be accepted. Somewhere else you could be. I don't think so. You deserve someone better, Karen. I want you. Don't you understand that? Of course I do. But you'd be making a mistake. You let me decide that. You can't do it for me. I'm sorry. It's not Kiss me now. Be my French animal. Here, come on, you do this again, and I'll have you deported. Come on. And the winner of the best mutt competition is Harvey, owned by Mrs. Edith Benton. <laughs> Leave it! I don't know where it's been. 
Excuse me. Um, I'd like to enter this dog in the uh, standard poodle class. You must be joking. Uh, why, do I look amused? Just get his name down. I'm afraid it's out of the question that a bedraggled, stinking specimen like that should be allowed to enter a, a prestigious competition like we have here. Don't, don't let the muck fool you. He, he, he's so well bred, I tell you, if he could speak, he wouldn't talk to either of us. Oh. <laughs> excuse me, young man. Excuse, excuse me. Mr. Greengrass! Mr. Greengrass! We won! We won. Oh, we won. Me, me and Alfred. Oh. Oh, we mean Harvey. We won. We won what? <laughs> Best mutt. Best what? Yeah. Look, shh, look at that. They say we're going to have Harvey's name engraved on it, and then Mrs. Brent walks. She'll never know that's not the best poodle. And uh, look, prize money. David, you are sometimes worth your weight in gold. What a shame it's not often. Come on. Utility dogs to the main reader. I'll take a vestry. You find someone to hide in here, all right? So, Ruth stole the candlesticks? Yes. But it didn't stop there, did it, Reverend? No. I realise she must have taken the key to the safe and given it to Oakes. So I made it look like someone forced the bureau. And that's where Simon comes in? Yes. And I'm not proud of that. And what about Oakes? I tried to make him stop, to leave us alone. But your wife contacted him and gave him the key to St Barnabas. You must understand that it's been very hard for her. Being a vicar's wife isn't exactly glamorous. And she's made so many sacrifices for me. I suppose she saw a way of changing things. I suppose she did. Maybe I should have known that I'm not enough for her. Perhaps I never was. Simon? I couldn't do it. I couldn't leave you. I'm sorry. Simon! In trouble. I know. I heard. It'll be all right. You'll see. Oh, how are you feeling? Well, I've uh, been given a clean bill of health. Well, that's wonderful news. Uh, that's what Mrs. Venturi said. She was ready to nurse me at home. Really? But you can't wait to get back there then, Alf. Not that much of a rush. A <laughs> uh, pint of best, please, Gina. Well, I can't understand it. Why do you let them engrave it in the first place? I was going to expect something engraved on, ain't she? I'm, I'm, I might as well talk to myself, mightn't I? I mean, you realise what we're going to do. We've got to buy another cup now and have it engraved ourselves. Well, that's going to cost all the prize money. Exactly, and whose fault's that? Ah, oh, Claude, there you are. 
Uh, uh, Mrs. Benton. <laughs> no, look, 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 your mummy's here. We, we, we didn't really expect you back so soon. Yes, my brother's better. Well, how did it go? Harvey, whatever's happened? Oh, he, he's been enjoying himself, haven't you? But, but don't worry, he walked it. Really? So he's a champion at last? He certainly is. Excellent! And that, that the trophy? Uh, uh, yes, but, but, but if you'll excuse me, I've, I've just remembered we, we've got a very urgent appointment. So uh, come, come on, come on, come on, see mummy. There we are, <laughs> David. Can't I buy you a celebratory drink? Oh, that, that's very kind of you. We'll, we'll have it another time. It really is urgent, David. Just a minute. What's this? Best mutt. Claude, come back here. Another satisfied customer, eh? <laughs> yeah, looks like it. Right, my round. Same again. Oh, thanks, Phil. It's nice, by the way. What is? The aftershave. <laughs> well, you chose it. Though by rights, I should have bought one for Mike, too. Sorry? Well, I take it you didn't conquer the drain single-handed after all. Uh, well, not exactly. I mean, it was a two-man job. I needed help. Well, you'll be able to fix the upstairs loo and that light switch on your own. Definitely. I'm sure. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> my partner thinks I say everything that pops into my head. Is that normal? You want to sleep with my wife? No, I want to sleep with my wife. <laughs> Who are you people? Detectives. LAPD. Damien Lewis stars in Life, tonight at 10 on ITV3.